a little Q&A with some of the speakers from this morning, just to say hi to everyone. Hi, Sean. Good. Hello. Good. Just checking you are there. Roland and Stephanie. Hi. Hello. Good, good. Fantastic. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick off with um, Sean because you were the first of the day. Very popular session. Lots of quite interesting information. I heard some people saying a bit gloomy, some people saying pretty dramatic, but... but it, you know, it was what it was, wasn't it? Let's be honest. Well, um, as I always remember uh, someone telling me, uh, you can try and stop the, su the sea coming in, but just remember, King Canute got his feet wet. Uh, it, it, it is what it is. Uh, nobody knows exactly the depth um, uh, of the gloom. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, we're being too pessimistic. Uh, but with the information that we have and, and, and looking at trends and looking at potential knock-on implications when some of the uh, support for companies and um, individuals ceases after a certain period of time, uh, uh, you know, th there are a lot of varying economic forecasts. And what we tried to do was to balance uh, the available information and provide a sensible view on um, uh, what was going to be happening. Uh, I certainly don't think it's uh, a good idea uh, to be too optimistic because people might do some strange things uh, uh, that come and bite them if they do. And it's you know, the best position um, uh, uh, with regard to the information that is available. But, but nobody knows uh, um, uh, exactly what's going to happen. No, you're absolutely right. I just wonder, <clears throat> since, since we recorded that, which was a couple of weeks ago, has, has anything changed in your mind or, or evolved? Do you sense that there's any sort of shoots of, of you know, green shoots that are cropping up? Uh, I, I suppose um, I, I, I'd probably be slightly more encouraged because we know more about it. And, uh, uh, you know, we've seen rele um, uh, lockdowns uh, being relaxed. Uh, more and more getting back to normal. It's, we're nowhere near there yet, but, but we are approaching that um, uh, in, in the area. I've had a couple of interesting conversations with companies um, uh, who are very concerned about security of supply chain, and they're starting to make some differences. Uh, they're talking about perhaps doing it themselves um, if they can't rely in, in, in a couple of cases in, in, in packaging. Uh, and I see talking to some print companies you know, they really are uh, being extraordinarily flexible uh, and changing order patterns uh, at the drop of a hat uh, and, and uh, you know, doing everything we can. I think we're seeing uh, a decline in the variety, certainly in the packaging sphere. Uh, uh, there's a lot fewer, um, uh, less availability of everything that, that, that's there. And that's enabled some people to be more efficient. Uh, 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 so in labels and sectors, instead of having 17 different materials, uh, well, you can have one or you can have a permanent white or you can have a permanent silver. OK, I'll have some of that, please. And it's allowed the vendors to be more efficient in their manufacturing, their uh, converting. And all of a sudden they're seeing significant improvements in um, productivity uh, because they're, they're, they're using less variety. And I wonder if something like that is going to be um, uh, sort yeah. of coming through. Yeah, Roland, do you, do you sense something similar? Yeah, like um, we talked about uh, earlier on and also uh, written in the um, sort of intro text um, towards the uh, virtual summit, is that there are um, a couple of sectors that have benefit, um, uh, have had benefit out of um, uh, the COVID-19 um, um, uh, situation. And um, um, I agree with, with Sean in that there's a mild uh, yeah, uh, warning because people now want to uh, go ahead again. So they want to desperately go on their holidays, go to clubs, go to places. Um, so, and print um, uh, belongs to that. Also, uh, sideways of print, um, you see that there's companies that have been making, for instance, um, materials to uh, cover print. And these materials are now being used as um, uh, shields or um, uh, masks. Um, uh, so I think that if you look at our industry, we're quite creative in trying to turn the negative into something positive so that it doesn't only stick with print itself, but it is applied print. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think I think what's interesting there is that we've talked quite a bit about some of the uh, things that printers have done. They've kind of been really clever with responding to the COVID crisis. But I sense that that might only last for a certain period, mightn't it? It might only be for the next sort of three to six months. And really what we need is we need something that tells us what's going to be the, the options for the future next year, you know, in 20, 2021. What, what, what would we kind of hope? I mean, the Aptiga launch is interesting and the ContiWeb launches, they're, they're interesting because they were evolving developments of print technology. Sean, what did, what did you expect to see at Drupal that would have taken us on into 2021 and, and the future? What were you expecting to see? I, I, I suppose the things that I was really looking forward to was the um, impact of um, industry 4.0, 2.0, whatever you want to, to call it, much more integration, uh, simplifying uh, uh, processes. Yep. But I thought the um, session from MGI and um, uh, Memjet talking about the AlphaJet. So it, it's a printing device, but it's also obviously doing all of the embellishment. And at some stage, it's going to be doing uh, cutting and creasing. And you can see things like that simplifying uh, uh, processes. When that happens, uh, it means that it, it, it's, it, it can happen in different places. Uh, and we'll see supply chain changes in there. Mm. Um, but it, 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 I suppose it was workflow linked into the digitization of the world yeah. uh, and how the printing industry is coming along with that. As we've actually been leading it for many years with digital printing, of course, uh, but it's digital manufacture. And I think that trend um, uh, is, is very big. And I've certainly seen that at a number of um, uh, printing companies in the commercial se sector rather than packaging guys. And I think that trend of digitizing manufacture yeah, that's interesting. Thinking about it in a different way. Mm, mm, I think well, you, well, you said it yesterday, didn't you? You said think about it in a different way. That kind of leads me quite nicely to, to having a conversation with Stephanie, because obviously, Stephanie, you run the Imprint show, and, and for many people who know it already, it's, it's a show that's uh, unlike Drupal, which is more about general print equipment. The Imprint show tends to be focused a little bit more on industrial manufacturing technologies. Um, now, you are going to run the next one in spring alongside ICE and CCE, which are two shows in the industrial space. CCE is obviously corrugated. So, so what's the kind of thinking behind that? And, and does, does this reflect what Sean's just intimated, that the, sort of, the, the future is actually a little bit more in the manufacturing space and thinking more in terms of industrial approach to, to, to manufacturing? Yes, so... ICE and CCE um, and imprint are a really good match. Um, ICE and CCE target markets that are also relevant markets for, for the imprint community, for the industrial printing community. So first of all, it's packaging markets and that obviously um, was mentioned a few times um, in a presentation from Sean. We saw quite, yeah, quite nicely how these are quite valuable um, markets with a lot, of, a lot of potential. They have been growing markets for, for a while and I think this is accelerated even more so by the current situation but I think what also um, has been mentioned just now is the the ability and also the need to be creative and to, to diversify so it's basically about to, to, to put your to bring your business forward you have to go into new markets and look for new applications and look for new technologies so mm -hmm. for imprint obviously we have print technology in the industrial manufacturing line that targets quite a wide variety of of industry sectors that are, of course, they're all to some extent um, if, uh, affected by, by COVID, but some more than, than others. And what I also think is, is quite interesting is that innovation doesn't stop. So over the last few years, we've seen a lot of sectors develop. We've seen a lot of new innovations coming in from a technolo um, technology side of um, things. And then it, it, within the summit already twice, the um, kind of antibacterial coatings have been mentioned, which I think is a very interesting development. And the point where now is innovation it's it's not the end let's say so there's new there's new markets coming on so for for yeah print print service providers it's it's valuable to look into new markets into new technologies and to go back to to ice and cce for them um so for the converting for the folding cart and for the, the card, um, cardboard it's it, printing is a very relevant um step for them because they yeah they produce a box or a label um or something and they they basically, after they convert it, like their film or their foil or whatever they want to do, they, they also need the printing step to 
to market and code it and to decorate it. So that's mm. a really um, nice link between these industries. And that's also the reason why we're putting these three shows next to each other to create a really strong platform with a lot of synergy effects. Yeah, and I guess I guess when we think about traditional print events, they've you know we've talked a lot about this about sort of big technology, the sort of million euro technologies, and and who's going to invest in those? Is there a sense that some of these sort of industrial applications, these projects exist and they're going to exist and they're not going to change because there are different? It's a different mindset there. Roland, Sean, what do you what do you sense? Yeah, well, Sean, if, if oh god, oh, sorry. Roland. Yeah. So if 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 you've seen uh, our uh, our session um, just uh, yeah uh, let's say three quarters of an hour ago, we already touched on the subject a little bit where uh, we're saying that um, um, these long projects to do integrations they will um, keep existing. The question is whether it coincides with reshoring or with um, people in Europe looking to. Uh, yeah, create short run, low volume, uh, um, uh, more personalized print so that yeah. they would then do smaller integrations of inkjet in those systems. Or that we're looking at a situation where we see that these integration projects are improving on um, existing situations uh, across the globe. And that sort of ties in with these industry shows. Um, so the question is, I think the most important question is whether or not our industry is yeah, reinventing itself um, so that they are closer to home and therefore also the shows closer to home. Therefore also the suppliers uh, closer to the people they deliver the stuff to instead of shipping all these things around the globe, people yeah. or technology. Yeah, agreed. Sean? Yeah, I, I think um, I had a conversation with um, Jim Continanza, the new CEO of Kodak, and interestingly, he just let let slip that uh, since the pandemic lockdown in March, they've still sold um, uh, many digital presses, inkjet, uh, uh, than that. So it, it hasn't stopped completely. Uh, um, I haven't. You know, there's new technology coming along that we've heard about. Um, uh, uh, there are various announcements that have been made yesterday by Zycon, for example. Uh, there's a product announcement coming up in a, a, a week or so um, uh, uh, from Domino. And um, I was talking to um, uh, the owner of a company that's going to be their first customer. And, uh, you know, they're desperate to get their hands on the technology because they think it's going to help them change their business practices and processes uh, uh, in, into being more effective for uh, customers when we do get back to the day one, um, uh, the new normal. So yeah, I think you know the traditional uh, um, uh, opportunities may be delayed, may, may, may go away, but if companies then decide they want to do something differently, then um, uh, they're either going to have to partner with somebody or buy some equipment uh, that helps them do that, whether it be in finishing, whether it be in adding value, whether it be in printing, pre-press, wh wherever, uh, and workflow. So I don't think it's going to be, it'll certainly be less um, uh, uh, high, high spend now, uh, but I, I don't think it's going to fall Stop. away totally because there is still going to be significant demand for printed products yeah maybe yeah. slightly different printed products uh, and they may have more um functions associated with them and you know stephanie uh, sort of mentioned if we get a, 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 a an antiviral coating on everything then you know if you happen to be in the coating business and your coating can apply that i suspect you'll be doing quite nice <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly exactly and that and that sort of sums it up doesn't it it's it's looking for those opportunities um that are, mm -hmm. that are created by by this crisis aren't they? it's just looking for those yeah but but, but printing companies are generally full of people who are very innovative, very entrepreneurial. They spot opportunities. They have. They talk to customers who have a particular demand, and they think, "Ooh, I could use this machine over here that wasn't designed for that. I could modify it a bit, maybe use it with a different material." And lo and behold, uh, they're creating new um, uh, uh, opportunities and new markets. Mm. And the printing companies. The converters in packaging they know what their customers want and, and what they can't get the vendors of machinery 
you know, they invent this stuff and they bring it to the market, but they don't really know how it's going to be used. And you know, that's certainly been the history uh, uh, um, since I've been involved in the printing industry. And I have absolutely no doubt we're going to see some really weird and wonderful left field examples, which when we sort of see them uh, and come across them, think, oh, that's a very good idea. That's obvious. Yeah, I should have thought of that. Uh, the problem is that we don't all think of that un un until we actually see it. But the industry is very good at copying and, and, and taking bits uh, and modifying it and using it in there. And I'm sure that's going to happen uh, uh, to a significant degree. Um, uh, yeah. Now, for some, this has been a blessing in disguise, maybe. Of course. That it triggered sort of the, the push towards being disruptive to themselves and creating something new because we have seen saturated markets with a lot of me too products and now maybe this has also triggered uh, a couple of the companies at least to take existing technology and utilize it for something different opening up new market new segment have you got an example of that roland can you think of something well, if if you if you now look at the um, recent marketing by durst or zunt or um, the people that have made machines just like sean said um, they are making machines, but they don't really know how people are using it. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, um, people are making masks with machines, and they weren't in the mask making business yeah. uh, in any case at first. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking it's slightly grander than that, rather than just responding neatly to the fact that you need stickers saying "Don't get too near to people." Mm -hmm. I wondered whether people were thinking kind of big about this, you know, really, really innovative, really, really reshaping the way they do things. It's funny, Sean, when you were talking earlier in your presentation, you talked about partnership, collaboration, doing things differently. I kind of sense that rather than, and I think we all agree, all sitting here, and, and it's been mentioned several times, there's been lots of little opportunities to change what you do, respond to the COVID crisis. I, I'm kind of looking for those bigger shifts those bigger opportunities the bigger ways of, of thinking about you the way you run business sure yeah yeah i i, I think um uh, i I'm, i see that there is some appetite by companies in the packaging sphere to actually partner with their uh, customers operate an in in plant cell in a manufacturing facility to do the printing there and then um, uh, and, I, and I suspect you might see one or two of those happening for labels, uh, for cartons, for metal boxes, um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, for rigids. But it's, it's, it's look at the function of the print rather than uh, the physical thing. You know, why are people buying it? What are they trying to do with it? Can I get closer to my customer? Can I um, uh, take out a load of waste? Can I re-engineer? my manufacturing processes uh, to try and be more um, uh, helpful uh, and, and compliant with with their business processes yeah yeah do you sense that that um, the, the word sustainability still is relevant sustainability is absolutely relevant it hasn't gone away uh, my comment is that i suspect that it, it is uh, at the moment not quite as important and not quite as mainstream um, uh, uh, as it was uh, before this event and in in food packaging uh, yeah. if, if supermarkets close their delicatessen counters uh, then people will buy pre-packed in foil trays or plastic trays with lidding film on it the ham the cheese the meat that they may have had cut from the um, uh, ham uh, itself. You know, it was interesting that one of the first things that the coffee shops in London did was they banned people from taking uh, their own cup in uh, because they didn't want to expose their staff to potential um, uh, contamination. So all of a sudden the uh, single-use coffee cup that was seen as being potentially very bad um, uh, uh, for the for the for the uh, environment and just from a sustainability purpose. Well, everybody started using the Costa. Uh, other brands are available um, uh, cups because that was all you could get your coffee in. Yeah, sure. And and interesting, as you said, you know, we'd we'd obviously been shocked into doing something about plastics in supermarkets, and a lot of things have been you know yeah. laid out. Uh, uh, you know up against other things and there was this concern that you know fruit was against meat and you know whatever whatever so the kind of the thinking switched a little bit hasn't it i guess yeah. just 
Sorry, go on. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I mean, I think, you know, it's plastic doesn't pollute, people pollute. Yeah. Uh, and it's plastics, it's the behavior. But as we get into more monomeric uh, or monolayer materials and other things, uh, and this stuff has a value rather than just being a, um, a, a source of fuel. Uh, a lot of other advantages are, are, are there for, uh, for plastic technology and, and the technologists uh, will get, get a solution and I'm sure then the um, uh, recycling and recovery uh, sector will there. It certainly hasn't gone away, uh, sure. but um, I suspect that food safety um, and, and food security is slightly more important at this moment in time. And obviously, um, Stephanie, with your show, you're running alongside uh, CCE which is about corrugated so that sense that the kind of packaging in that respect is is significant to the to the print market that kind of connection between the two that's why do you sense that's the, it's a, a good match for imprint yeah yeah definitely I think especially for the the corrugated market what we can't forget is it's a packaging material and they're up against other packaging materials so for them, it's really in the interest to, to integrate with print technology because print, I think, is very often about adding value and customization and individualization is, is very important. So for them, it's, it's very important that they have more knowledge or they gain more knowledge about print technology. And as you said in the session um, earlier, we've, we've done some research, we, we did a, um, a survey to the visitors. Basically, there's a lot of interest in, in print technology and a lot of companies are already working with print technology, but they, they want to increase that and they want to, to do more on that side. Um, maybe also to add to what um, Sean said earlier about companies partnering with other companies. I think this is something we increasingly see where companies from presumably one sector partner with, with companies from another sector, and that's for applicable for the, the corrugated and cardboard area, but also from like the converting industry, there's some um, ICE, for example, there's one of the largest exhibitors, they, um, they partnered basically with a print technology manufacturer and they developed a digital print machine for PVC coated um, wallpaper application. So that shows as well, markets are, are getting closer um, together, cl closer to each other to, to basically work together to, to come and printing and, and converting and coating. And that, that's yeah. also very interesting, I think. Yeah, you're right. And in fact, um... I know that the next session is tackling exactly that, looking at uh, surface decoration and uh, flooring, uh, wallpaper, those areas, which are obviously, you know, still very relevant for uh, for digital print. And so uh, we won't we won't touch too much on that because uh, obviously they'll be chatting about it in a moment. Uh, just to wrap up with all of you, really, um, I, I guess I'd just like to ha have a kind of view of how you think uh, if, if you're a printer today listening to this where's your opportunity lie what should you be doing I mean you touched a little bit on it in terms of collaboration things there is there anything else you would say to them Roland as a printer out there what should they be doing um, yeah I'm, I wanted to go back a little bit to what Sean said it's 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 also about the segment that you're in so um, you can't really say something more or less general to all the printers if you look at uh, for instance textile printing as a segment um, there you see that there's been a lot of problems now with uh, the delivery of goods um, uh, because closing of, of orders and there has been already a huge, huge, huge discussion about the sustainability in digital textile printing. Um, and then um, uh, if, if I look at all the people that we've been talking to in the last couple of you know, weeks and months, um, they see an opportunity in uh, reshoring. So they see an opportunity in um, giving more services yeah. uh, with their print. Uh, that it not just becomes a or stays a me too product that you can get from faraway places. So one of the opportunities I think is in uh, integration of um, uh, your services and your production and making sure that you actually understand um, what your customer motivation is, why they want to do business with you. Um, uh, that is way more important, I think, than just looking at the technology part uh, of it. Yeah, I think that's very valid. And it's come through in a lot of the talks that we've had that, uh, that kind of think, thinking a little bit differently. So, Sean, did you want to add anything? I, I, I think the 
Roland, you're absolutely right. The, 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 there isn't a print industry. We are a continuum of industries that tend to overlap in certain areas yeah. that involve putting in, uh, material colorant onto um, a, a, a substrate. But what I would say is, is that if you, you think that you are a producer of magazines, a producer of books, a producer of business cards or, or whatever, broaden your thoughts there are lots of other things that don't necessarily uh, relate to just putting ink onto paper that you can do that add value to your customers that are paying for your customers to do and and think like that so that you're not just uh, there to produce the um, business cards or, or, or whatever what are they using them for how do they do it are they looking um, uh, to, to get out outside of the, of the normal areas and, and, and nothing is off limits yeah, yeah, I think uh, and yeah. the skills that we have in the um, uh, different industries are still relevant and important uh, uh, and, and can be used in different ways by, by different people and yeah. I think you know start small play around with it see if it works if it does talk to somebody else about it talk to somebody else about it uh, yeah. and before you know where you are your business will change yeah I think that's absolutely yeah, I, right. I agree so, with Stephen. some yeah, I, I agree with what you said. Um, there, there's a lot of different companies and you need to see for your, your own individual business what stage you're at and where you can get to. But what I think this, this crisis is showing is that more is probably possible than you would have thought. So, I mean, change is kind of scary if you, if you think about it. But I think before that, a lot of companies were probably aware that they might have to diversify and look at other areas and how they could transfer their skills. But it's, it's often daunting, but now a lot of companies are essentially forced to, and then we see all these examples of where they succeeded in doing that because they had to. And I think that also leads to like basically a shifting mindset of, yeah, I could, and I, I will, I will look into other areas. And, and obviously we're very much in the space of printing on a variety of, of shapes and materials and imprint is all about finding new applications and developing new applications for, for printers, for example. So I think a lot of companies, for them, it's it's a good opportunity as well to to take that chance and to look for new yeah new ways of doing things, new applications, and see how other companies are are dealing with this and what other things you could do to to further your business, basically. Yes, thank you. It's, it's definitely absolutely spot on.